beyond Welcome back this week, everyone, to another episode of Beyond 3D. Matt, how are you? All is going well this week, Clint. Hopefully you're doing pretty good out there as well. You look flat. It's the I week. am flat. It's, it's the end of the week. It's been busy as all get out. It drives me nuts sometimes. Yeah, well, you've still got uh, you've still got Sunday tomorrow. So. Oh my God, I have. It. Yeah, everybody loves Sunday. Don't complain about no, it. No, 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 no. I'm working Sunday. Oh, I we know. have an 80th birthday party for my father-in-law, and I will believe me, I'm working Sunday. Okay, a lot of stuff to do. Anyway, that's not the point, guys. Welcome to this edition of Beyond 3D. It's, it is good to be here, Clint, and uh, we have a special guest this week. So I'll let you do the introduction. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to do something a little different this time. Go for it. Normally, we do an introduction for every guest we have on. Tonight, we have Peter Maxwell Slattery. Peter, are you there? Yeah, mate. Thanks for having us. No worries, Peter. Peter, how about, for a change, you tell all our listeners all about who you are, and we'll take it from there. That's the best way to do it. Mm. Um, well, let's see. Uh, who is Peter Maxwell Slattery? Who, who am I? Well, I, I grew up in Albury, Wodonga, uh, which is on the border of New South Wales and Victoria. Uh, I, you know, during my... Younger years, I guess I'm only 33 now, but uh, I did different jobs as a cleaner and a bit of a baker and all different sorts of things. And sort of, I guess, around my late teens, early 20s, I started to also pursue a rap career. And I ended up doing, I think, around 16 albums. I bought out my latest one, which I thought I was done with it, but I sort of had a conscious aspect on it. But uh, I've sort of been doing that on and off for years uh, while, you know, doing different jobs around the country. Um, I eventually moved up to the Gold Coast, uh, not, not for too long, it's sort of just my life had a, <coughs> excuse me, change in direction, and I went back to Albury Wodonga and I started, uh, you know, just trying to get my life on track in a different area, and I uh, started having experiences, uh, I've, I've always had experiences, but really it beefed up because I had witnesses, I was filming this stuff, and then all of a sudden the news got a hold of it. Hey, Pete. Uh, hey, yeah. Pete. Sorry to interrupt. Just before we go any further, you use a term that our listeners are quite familiar with because Matt and I use that term quite often. It's called being an experiencer. Um, yep. In your experience, can you tell our listeners tonight what that actually defines as? Well, I've, to cut to the chase, I believe every single person on this planet is an experiencer, whether they realise it through their thoughts or visions, their third eye, or what they see or not. But it's somebody who's having experiences with what we'll say is not the normal, paranormal, but I believe it's actually normal. I believe it's as normal as, you know, how we breathe air or we see each other in, in this reality. So it's somebody that's, uh, you know, having experience which we're told is not normal or not real, whether it's, you know, hauntings, paranormal type stuff, lights in the sky being, um, you know, at the place that you're at or whether you're being taken to other realms or on you know, crafts, what people report as, um, you know, just crafts you know, or facilities, whatever people want to term it. So it's people that are having experiences that are not quite normal, I guess. Fair enough. That's a, that's a great answer, Matt. Yeah. Fantastic answer. Because what, I think with that answer, what's going to happen is as, the, as our listeners are basically taking that in, one of those terms one of those things is going to resonate with them with somebody with someone and mm -hmm. and that they'll say yes that's happened to me and that's the main thing and yep. and you can say well you're part of that group so that's a good thing i know mm -hmm. hey Pete, what um what was your first experience that you actually had well my first experience i didn't sort of really think about it till later but between the ages of eight and twelve when i was living at a certain it's, it's definitely between those years because i moved into a certain house with my mum and my stepfather and then i moved to my dad's around 12 but i would have experiences where i woke up to what's reported as a gray but these things aren't weren't gray they were white or well, one of them was white anyway and i would sort of come to um I, I can't tell you what time of night because you know between the ages of eight and twelve and Besides seeing what I'm seeing, I don't, didn't know what the hell was going on, let alone looking at the time, but um, I would be looking at this thing with armour sort of shapes with black eyes and it was white and it almost almost had a texture on its skin. Like if you get cigarette ash and you get your pinky finger and sort of dab it, that sort of grainy texture, that's what this dude's skin looked like. And I can't tell you how I saw him in the room, but what was weird was that there was light. Every time I had this experience, there was a light coming in 
through the out, you know, the rim of the curtains in the bedroom, um, and I would sort of pull the sheets over my head and turn away and, and just, you know, I didn't see, think it was an alien, I didn't think it was a demon, I didn't think it was an angel, I didn't know what the hell it was, and I didn't really think about it till years later, but originally what happened when I started having these experiences but I was, was I would see Kirk and Bane walk into my bedroom, and then after the, the first time that happened, it seemed to like shift between Kirk and Bane and this grey alien, and then after that it would appear as its true nature, or what I think its true nature is anyway, because I've been told later that these beings are sort of a collective and sort of a force that works for the collective of, of the whole, the council of the whole that's been related to me, but um, what's funny is my brother's sceptical and I think everyone needs to be sceptical because I think the problem with not just the UFO field or the paranormal field but society in general is with that we blindly believe anybody, you know, whether or not all of us, but whether it's politicians, you know, or people blindly believe in the, the Bible or whatever, that's the problem. So my brother's very sceptical but he's also an experiencer and what happened was I was relaying this to my mum when I visited her house one day in recent years and my brother walked up to me and said, oh, and the, those type of beings used to hold my hand and walk me on the craft. And I was like, hang on a friggin' minute here. We've never, ever talked about this. And he's telling me that the being I'm describing is to hold his hand and walk him on the craft. So this is something that was like, you know, a lot of my experiences, uh, I am by myself or even my partner is there during them now. And she's um, known around the world as the ET communicator and we've been together for two years, but... When you've got somebody else with you during an experience, it just, you know, you know you're not even more nuts. And I know what I'm experiencing, just like I know that I've got this copy in my hand now. But the, the other side of it, too, is I've got a lot of people that experience the crafts with me, see um, different types of crafts, all the wispy stuff, which is the beings that out of phase walking around the home. And I've had a couple of hundred people here in Melbourne witness this, and I've only been in Melbourne here for two years now, um, or just under. But, you know, when my brother told me that, that was a bit of a trip because I'm just like, God, you know, I could have spoken to you for years about this type of stuff. And he never, you know, he could have talked to me. So that was pretty much the first sort of range of experiences that uh, I've had. It's interesting. I think of when we're kids, I think a lot of us have a similar type experience. All of a sudden there's a being in your bedroom and you just go, what the heck is that? And you don't want to move or scream or anything because it'll get you. Um, So you do your best to wish it away. Um, So I can can relate to that absolutely. So your experiences run the gamut, really. You're talking about UFO, you're talking about paranormal, you're talking about spiritual experiences. Now I did get on... um, YouTube and I looked at your YouTube page and you also talked about that you have a guide and I find that absolutely fascinating because then you're getting into the realm of the things I really love to talk about and so in this vid you talked about um, from the Pleiades and your guide so could you give us a little bit on your guide because I think once well, at least this has been my experience once your guide reveals themselves to you a lot of things start to open up and a lot of things start to make sense in so insofar as your experiences you can go back in life over your experiences that you've had and it all really comes together in gels and before you get into that i like you was a person who really i was very young spiritually bent person but i also needed proof i wanted tangible proof so i didn't i always questioned so, being that you have a guide, can you just give our audience a gist, the gist of your guide and the different messages you've received over time? Well, I've got a number of guides, and what I've come to learn over time is that a number of these guides, not all of them, but a number of them, and I can't, like, there's a, a heap of them, um, but a number of them are other facets of myself that coexist, so times an illusion at the exact same time. And it's almost like there's, if you can imagine a soccer ball and each face on that soccer ball, like the, the Pentagon or the Hexagon or whatever they are, each one of them is a different life at the same time. And that ball is almost like a cell. And it's a cell of all that is in terms of, I was shown that uh, our whole body, if you call that God, source, consciousness, whatever you want, and if you can imagine each cell in that body, all of them together make up that intelligence, that consciousness. And that one cell, if you can imagine that one body of the cell, that's the soccer ball and connected to that is all these lives that I'm living at the same time or they're continuing on at different stages of evolution. 
Um, but the main being that I communicate with, and she started to physically appear with me, and people have seen her physically or in their mind's eye. Or they've even seen her as a little boy. Now, I'll say her because I need a reference during this human experience, just I do anyway, to, to relay this. She started to appear as a female, um, slightly bigger, normal eyes than ours, about my height, and she would come in almost like with wetsuit material clothing, and from the chest down, it had these geometric patterns over it that were like squares, rectangles, triangles, circles, all different things, but the, the colours on there were red, uh, yellow, and blue. They were the main, main makeup of that. And I started having these experiences, and when she first rocked up, she started telling me I didn't know who I was. Um, it's just all these different things. And at that time, I was pretty fed up with what was going on because my life completely went to crap, especially after I went on um, TV and everything else like that and got around, which I didn't look for. I just had to share what it was. You know, the news came to me about what I was filming and things. So uh, in time, I learned that her true nature is that she's almost like this... Like, if you can imagine, like, a five foot or beyond, and I think that even the, the projection sometimes of her height is not exactly what it is, I don't know, but it's almost like a quartz crystal white light. No arms, no legs, it's almost just like a, a crystal. Like, it's the only way I can describe it. Anyway, in time I, I learned, um, and this is, as far out as this is going to sound as some, that she's a being that resides on the Starmer Road. And she's a gatekeeper, and that, that, that star is a portal. And she works in sync with other beings, and she's just a gatekeeper of that that. Um, that star. Now, to go into it a bit more, is originally what started happening was I had these blue orbs rock up in the house, and I wrote about this going uh, back to, I think, 2012, maybe that book came out, but in 2011, um, I started experiencing, even before that, these blue orbs in the house, and in time, I had these seven-foot-tall light blue light beings with liquid light in them. No sort of definitive features, though you could sort of see outlines of things, but they weren't male, they're not female. And eventually I learned over time that they called themselves the Elohim, but they said we're not angels and we're not what you people perceive, but that's almost like a label I could give them, take them any religious taint out of it. Now, these, these guys are also in different realms and they start and protect the geometric light realms that go from different densities up from us and beyond where all this stuff that we see, star systems, planets, all that, it doesn't exist in these vibrations. Everything's geometry, everything's light. And you sort of have to go through these guys to even get to those those realms because it depends on the level of consciousness that you are at which determines whether you access it or not. But there are pinpoints where they reside in Orion, Sirius and the Pleiades. And in time I learned that Shiji, which is the guide from the Pleiades, the other facet of me that I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. that first appeared as a female, she's an offshoot of them and at her younger stage of evolution. Um, so, and, and how they, they procreate and all that is just through thought. When I've been on the craft sometimes, I've been as this light blue light being with six other beings and we're sitting down and we're all made out of this blue light, but it was more white. white it was white light with a tinge of blue to it. And the craft was dish-shaped, and it was made out of the same light, and it was created through thought, through group consciousness. And what got me was this happened during the middle of the day. I was I was ripped out of body. I went to go and meditate, and all of a sudden, I'm in this state, and I looked down, and if I defocus off the floor of the craft, I could see the roof of my home during, like, real time. And then if I defocused, I could see that the... the floor of the craft again was just made out of this blue light and when I've been on other crafts a lot of the crafts seem to be made out of blue light that I've experienced so that's just sort of a mm. I don't know I've, I've sort of got to connect things and go all over the shop here because everything is just connected in some way and you know the experiences are ongoing they're, they're daily Beyond, beyond, beyond three, 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 D, 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 D. One of the things, Pete, that we do when we interview somebody is we seem to come across the same situation where people have all the pieces to the jigsaw puzzle, but they can't quite put it all together. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, I've got, I've got one piece of that jigsaw puzzle and I still haven't even finished that one piece that created it because I'll tell you what, the more that I experience, the more I find out that how little I know and I just can't wait to get years down the track to connect even things that are boggling my mind today. 
But I think every single one of us has got that one piece of that jigsaw puzzle. And I've had people from all around the world, from all ages, contact me. And some of these people claim they know everything that's going on. And I say to them, be careful, because in the next few days, you're going to get your backside kicked. And they usually call me back up and go, you know, this happened. And it's like, well, why are you talking to me if you knew everything? And number two, you've just, you know, had your paradigm shifted again. And that's what I think we've got to constantly do is, is just be open-minded because... Um, there's been times they haven't lied to me, but they've given me an idea or a concept later to understand the greater understanding because in my human linear mind at the time, I just can't perceive what they're trying to put across to me. No, because as I said earlier, and I think it's very, I think it's very pertinent, I'm hearing things from you that resonate within me as well. I've had certain experiences as well, so that's, but it's not about me, it's about you. And well, well, that's something I think is important to cover here is that Yes, there's an overall collective thing going on here, a, a, a shift happening within humanity, but, you know, at the end of the day, when I talk to a lot of experiences, especially when they start out and then I talk to them down the track, what they learn is that the experiences are more targeted towards them and who they are. And they don't, you know, you, we can't see that when the experiences start out because we're sort of stuck into, especially if you've seen UFO hunters or, or ghost hunters, you're sort of stuck in that side of things, and it? It's way trippier than anybody can imagine. And I think that's something that um, a lot of experiences, in my opinion, anyway, come to find out is that the experiences are targeted more to who they are and their, their true nature. So it touches the surface of us, but, you know, it, it all comes into an overall collective thing as well. It's, it's sort of a mixed bag, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Pete, um, something that I would would be pondering on and and i'm sure listeners at home tonight would be pondering on it as well why you and why why when you meet up with other experiences do you guys all sit around and talk about what it is that you find or the reason that you guys had that calling not really like i've had some people that i've had to pull up say we're the chosen ones and i'm like nobody's more important than anyone else and what it is from my understanding is that Everyone's got their own journey, and some people, I guess, have put their hand up to do more, and I guess to highlight a broadest aspect of reality when they've incarnated here or come here for the human experience at this time. And I wrote a book which sort of outlined a lot for me um, a few years ago called Operation Starseed, and it's sort of like what was revealed to me is that I came here and I, ha- I have full recall of saying I'll come here and do what I've got to do. I hate, I'll tell you what, these days I just wish I could just get the hell out of here. But um, yeah, I've, I've got recall of that. And, and you know, at the same time, why not me? You know, from what I experienced, everyone is having experiences. I just don't think people take notice of their thoughts. But every, like, it's Operation Starseed, and my call to that is because it's like a military operation. Everyone's playing a part, whether they're consciously aware of it or not. Even their energy signature, um, the, the true nature of them behind the scenes, everyone's participating in this operation here, and some are here to wake others up, some are here just, just to be like more social about it, um, some are here to spark people's consciousness and um, ideas to the concept of something beyond what they think is a five sense reality. Um, you know, everyone's got a different job, and that's what I come to realise from it. But that's that's why I mean, you know, years ago I would say to you, quite honestly, I don't know why I mean, but I know why I mean now, and it's because I've put my hand up and to go, all right, I'm going to come here and do this, and you know, it's it's one hell of a job, I tell you that, because this is what I do full time, um, and it's something I never thought I'd be doing in terms of um, whether it's answering emails or, you know, doing sessions or having sky watches or doing talks. Who would have thought, you know, years ago when I was rapping and everything else that I'd be doing this now, but it seems to be more of networking. And when I do talk to other experiences, they've come with the same sort of idea down the track that they chose to come here and do this, whatever it is that they're doing. Um, but when I do catch up with a lot of other experiences, usually our experiences are the last thing we talk about. We usually just chill and hang out because it's very rare you get to hang around your own type that get you and you can fit the room and don't even need to talk. 
Man just answered the question quite eloquently, don't you think, Matt? I'd say so. <laughs> I would absolutely say so. So, yeah. um, You've had a really massive paradigm shift very quickly, haven't you? Definitely. Definitely. Um, and it's daily. You know, it, it happened really quick when, when it was sort of, I think, around maybe the age of 27 or 33 now where it started to, like, kick in. But you've... You know, what a lot of people don't know unless they know know my story is that um, I was single in a flat by myself at the time. I was having these experiences with nobody in, in the house except friends or family would visit and I'd see crafts or weird things happen. But uh, I went through a lot of this alone at the start and it got to a stage where I stopped working for a while and I was meditating probably between 6 and 12 hours a day depending on it. And I was wanting to meet these guys halfway and work out what the hell was going on. And I think because just my, my nature, I get obsessive, obsessive and a bit paid off about things. I, I had the drive to find things out. And, um, you know, I'll tell you what, I've done nine books now and I've done ten documentaries and I still have that, that much drive. And it's because I want to help people, but also I'm still trying to find out more about what's going on on a multidimensional level because it is so laid and thick that what's going on is so big that everyone's playing a part and I think really soon we hear about for years people talk about this shift in consciousness yada 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 and I'll tell you what 90% of it's crap but something is going on at the moment and we're seeing it in every aspect of society whether it's financially whether it's um, got to do with how we treat each other and the home, uh, homeless and, and the poor people um, technology everything is getting to like sort of the the top of the hill and you know, something is about to be, is about to happen, and I don't think it's going to be like everyone floats off to the fifth dimension and mm-hmm. you know what people think. I think it's a lot more uh, individualised that people go to certain places where they're meant to, and I think they're not even going to realise it. From what I've been shown, um, some people are going to go back to where that they've they've come from, or the, that facet of their souls or souls come from, or they'll continue on on their journey, or some will go back to source. And some will be guides here and help people coach, I guess, sort of how we got guides, we'll be guides to those here. And I think it's going to be done in such a way where we're not even going to really know that things have happened until after the fact, just so it's, it's done in such a way where it's not going to boil humanity to the point where we just explode or we, we do ourselves in just because of this huge revelation of we think we know everything and really when we see how we've been manipulated um, to some extent, how there's been things mentioned on the news that we haven't questioned, you go back years later, whether it's 9-11 or whatever people want to talk about, going back to the blindly belief situation, which I spoke about earlier, when people start to go, hang, you know, years ago they said the government wouldn't do that, this or that, whatever it was, and I don't think it's per se the government, but now they're open up to going, well, hey, this doesn't add up. And this is all part of the unfurling of the higher level of consciousness coming in. And I think we're going to solve a lot of the problems that we've got um, with the higher level of consciousness like Albert Einstein is to say. You can't solve a problem with the same level of consciousness that created, therefore you need a higher level of consciousness. And I think that's what's happening now is that as a collective and individually, we're thinking outside the box. And I believe we've already got cures and um, different systems of energies, which I've actually personally seen when I was in uh, the United States recently. I know that there's free energy. I've been on, you know, the crafts and everything else, but I, oh, I saw something with my partner and a friend which was completely free energy. And um, these are things we've, we've got. It's just getting them out there and I think it's coaching humanity at the same time to be open to it. Beyond, 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 three, 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 D, 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 D. Okay, Peter, when you were in the United States, you said you saw some things uh, with your partner that were definitely free energy. Can you expand on that? Can you tell us what you saw? I can't go into too much at the moment, but that's what I'm saying to people is I'm letting people be aware of it at the moment. But things are, things are coming out um, in terms of, I'll tell you about what, there was a healing unit that we saw over there, and uh, I can't even say too much about that because this guy's getting his lawyers ready and everything to release this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's terminology and everything else. And the same person had the, the devices which we saw in everything, his car, his home. Um, but people, uh, one lady had a whole body riddled with cancer except for two organs and she was completely healed in three weeks. 
um, people had their an- uh, lady had her animal, uh, her dog in there when we rocked up there. And I'll tell you what, I walked into this room and my partner and I and our friend all said that thing is freaking alive. The device was alive. It was like when you're on a craft. You're connected to you, is connected to you. That's what the level of, of technology we're talking about. So it's not something that's, you know, normal, like these uh, magnetised, you know, the magnets with the free energy motors and all that sort of thing that, that people are talking about. Mm-hmm. This thing was alive. And that's different. Like, this, this thing had consciousness. Kind of. And like- it knew, knew your intent. It knew why you were connecting with it, what you wanted, if anything at all. And it was quite an experience because we were all left by ourselves with this unit for some time. Sounds a little bit like a mother box. Well, I'll tell you what, we didn't expect it because we went up towards the Elm to go and do a do a talk, which is at the bottom of Mount Rainier. Mm-hmm. And this lady said, you've got, um, Sol, my partner, had this lady as a client. And um, she said, you've just got to come over and see because my partner and her hit it off as friends. And she was telling about um, her partner working on technologies. And I'm thinking, well, I've heard it all before. Because um, I, I have heard it all before, probably like you guys, whether it's with Dr. Gray or whoever came and they've got all these free energy devices. So I'm thinking, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. But uh, I'll tell you what, when I got to their home and within a few minutes of talking to him and he handed me a device and I could feel the energy off it and then I, with another device I could walk into the room and communicate with it, I was quite taken aback by it. So there's definitely things out there that um, that, that humanity ourselves are creating. Um and we're trying to get some of that happening over here as well, which I can talk to you about at a, at a later date. Sounds great. Absolutely. Are you sure they were human? That would be the first thing I would that say. Was I would, exactly I would the, look at that person if they have like almost like a bioorganic device and you could actually feel the energy off it and then feel that there's sentience there. I'd wonder about it. Uh, that's exactly what I was thinking too. We, we, we have we have pondered on that. We have. But I'll, I'll tell you what, it was just trippy because when he handed me one of the devices, it was like Reiki on crack. I'm like, what the hell is this thing? You can just feel it communicating. So it's not, um, I don't know, it, it works like the devices work on multiple levels. That's all I can say because it's just something that I'm like, you know, stuff, the normal free energy stuff we hear about, this is like where you want it. This is like going from stage one to two. Just, And that's where I think we should be at because it was completely... Uh, zero emissions and it was pulling it from the fabric of space from my understanding and we could measure it. Well, the fact of the matter is, if you if there is tech, I, I believe you and I believe there is definitely technology out there like that and I can understand people who are stewards of or create something like this, they have to be extremely careful because if not, they can disappear. Yeah. Um, you have to be extremely careful with how information like that is released. I do also know um, Stephen Greer talks about the fact that it has to be totally open source and things along these lines because that way once it's out there, there are other things that can be done with it as far as royalties are concerned. But I don't know, there's sometimes, and I've heard other people, um, a few people in New York that are in the medical field, um, also with cancer, got rid of cancer in people within five to seven days. Um, but they will not tell you um, exactly what protocols were used. So there's a lot of information. I, I can thoroughly understand where you're coming from with that. And the thing about that, let me ask you this question then, Peter. What about in Australia specifically? Clint and I, I was just about to say to Clint, we need to get out more often and really start going around and looking into these things. So what about in Australia, Peter? What have you discovered along the lines of free energy, along the lines of mechanisms, spiritual or otherwise, that people are creating down here? Because there's a lot of creativity in this on this continent as well. Um, I think people are building the stepping stones for it. And I've come across um, some of it as well. It just wasn't like the... And I'll tell you what, I just, it was the last thing of what I just told you guys with what happened in the US, that was the last thing on my mind that was going to happen on that trip. Mm. Um, it's just, you know, and I don't believe anything to police this, but in Australia, I haven't come across anything at that level, but it's sort of more like the, the magnet motors and, and things like that. Um, and again, there's so many different things out there, but a lot of them just don't work. I, I, I've just got to be honest, a lot of things that I've come across just do not work. And that's why I've got to be sceptical. I don't want myself or anyone else led astray when people claim that they're doing this or doing that, um, if they're full of crap or it doesn't work, I'll, I'll say it because I'm sick of this field and society in general being muddled up with so much, whether disinformation or false or fake 
um, devices that, um, you know, that don't work or they've got no no, um, no substance really to them. But yeah, I can't say sort of much more than that with Australia. I've met a lot of people working on on different things and it's almost like they're on the stepping stones or building blocks of, of a bigger or greater idea. Um, but that's sort of about it when it comes technology-wise. And, and look, at the end of the day, I think the, the biggest form of technology is our own development spiritually. And I don't mean that in a religious sense or anything airy-fairy, but the stuff that we can do, some of these crafts I see, they're not even crafts. They're consciousness. They're created from thought. They're beings in their light body, which I think used to think Merkabas and all that was a load of crap. I've seen these things. I've been on them and I've interacted with beings and balls of light. I'll tell you what um, I've, re- I've t- oh, it's interesting you say that Peter I'll tell you what I wrote down here I wrote down in some of my notes I said orbs and I the question for me was I was going to put up this as an idea for you humans that can control their consciousness and leave their body at will could appear as light beings as in light form as an orb as an orb exactly it is exactly what happens and some of the times when I'm filming the craft I'm on the craft looking at myself well, I've had that experience myself, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Right, and very rarely I've come across other experiences that I have, and that's the, that's the nature of it. Is it, uh, whether it's by location mm-hmm. or splitting up, um, however people want to term it, that is pretty much um, what's going on. It was funny. Have you ever heard of Michael Lee Hill? No, no. He was on UFO Hunters, and he's the one with the creatine level that was like two thousand, and he is filming this amazing footage that just got the ticks on all boxes um, from everyone on the show, the UFO Hunter show, because filming crafts over Lake Erie. And anyway, long story short, years later, I had him on my show when I used to have the show, Mm -hmm. Um, and he was talking about, uh, there was a UK document talking about one of the crafts that was triangle with three lights, and this is not saying all crafts with the, the three triangle lights, apparently it was three beings that created a solid craft. And then they went back to three separate things, and somehow this was in a Ministry of Defence document. I, I haven't fully checked it out, but um, you know, this is this is what it's getting to: is that a lot of the craft aren't you know nuts and bolts like people think. Um, there's different variations. There's different, of course, technologies used. Some that are more nuts and bolts. I'm not like you know nuts and bolts, but are more metallic and things like that. And then some of them. Uh, organic mushroom type like or, or crystal and then you know the advanced ones that I was showing were were what you're talking about but even one bigger thing than that was I had an experience to where I was showing that we can break down in consciousness to one electron and because all electrons throughout the whole entire universe first have a symbiotic relationship you can re-manifest anywhere in the universe from another electron and re-manifest from all the other, other electrons electrons there to manifest whether physically in a or whatever you want and that was sort of showing me the symbiotic relationship of the universe so pete that's technically we're talking if we're going to put it into layman's terms it's being able to jump from one point in the universe to the other using your consciousness by, yeah, by yeah. attaching yourself to one electron to the other yeah that's amazing yeah and see that's sort of past the the merkaba or the light body for me because um, you can do that, but you don't even have to travel around in it. You can just re-manifest, you know, straight away, which I know that they do anyway, but this sort of gave me the more detail of how it's done on a human understanding. I know it's deeper than that, but that was sort of the best I can relay mm. in what they could show me. Mm. Beyond, 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 three, 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 D, 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 D. You're pretty much giving us your experience and your um, interpretation of what you've witnessed. But a lot of people listening to this would be thinking to themselves or, or using that as a general umbrella term for everything. And I'd like to highlight and caution people not to do that. Yeah. Because, you know, you could have had an interaction with one type of entity, only one. And there's, there could be thousands. The amount of beings I've seen, I can't tell you. Like, even with the grey-looking beings, I've seen over 12 different types, and a few of them, most of them actually weren't even grey. Um, and different types of, um, like, there's there's three different variations of Pleiades that I've interacted with, whether on different timelines or different places in the in the future. Or, or um, not just that, like, I could go on and on. And this is where 
it's just not one type of intelligence out there. There are so many different types of intelligence, even living side by side with us right now beneath the Earth. Um, and then we, we can talk about the nature realms and everything else like that. Uh, there's, there's, it, it's so, you know, if anybody thinks I'm nuts, like, I can totally believe it because um, it's just, you know, it, it's so out there if you haven't had an experience or you think you haven't that, you know, of course it's going to sound nuts. And, of course, people say, well, why haven't I seen it? This and that. You know, they can always go on. And that's that person's journey. But I think it's very important to say that I don't want people to believe me or you guys. I want people to do their own research. And if they haven't experienced something themselves or with me, I can totally understand where they're coming from because, again, like I spoke about earlier, the problem with society is blind belief. And if people blindly, blindly believe me, I think they've got a problem. What's your thoughts, Pete, on the concept of the Earth being a living farm? Um... Or, or I'll put it in a different term, a biological experiment. Yes, and it's, it is, but it isn't at the same time. Um, what, what, what is it that... Is there something in particular, Pete, that you might know? I, I can tell you exactly what I know, but I can't tell you it to be... Um, for you to be fact. I can tell you what I personally know and what I've experienced and what information I've got. What, what, Which, what, do, and, what do you personally know, Pete, that you can share? What I personally know is that Earth... Uh, is a mixture of different beings from different places, which I would call the Star Nations. Um, there was a, not, not, maybe experiment you could put it, maybe not, but where the highly evolved races got together to try and create something together. And what manifested from some parts of that were traits, especially emotional traits, which are very intense on the love scale and the hate scale, which they didn't think would manifest in. It hadn't been done on a scale like this before either. Um, so on that side of things, this is where um, we are a mixture of multiple beings to create a super being in the 3D realm. And once we can master this, we can do things that even the Elohim was showing me, which we could call angelic, but I hate the angelic term, um, that we can do things that they can't. And what they're doing is they're getting things from our blueprint of our life body and, it, and adding it to them, almost like getting genetics from something and mixing it with something else because we've got traits and abilities that they don't even have but we don't even know about it they're almost dormant in us until we can sort of tap into it um recently oh, we went up to the gospel glyphs as well i took james gilliland up there when my partner Sol and i went up there and um it was interesting that they've got a genetic story there where beings from the pleiades came here and um, manipulated one of the beings that were here. And I can't remember the name of the type of being at the moment. And they created, they, they say, the original person from it, the original, the original person. And I work here with Ulukai Brenda Money, um, Bari, King of the Raven Tribe here. And they, the story is that the original person was created so the Pleiadian could incarnate them. But it's not just the Pleiades behind the scene. I've got a stronger connection with the Orions than I do with the Pleiades. But then there is, like I say, only a small fraction of what I'm interacting with can I even give you a reference for. And a lot of the times they're close to the star star system, not there. And once you get past the star systems and you go to the geometric light realms, I've got no freaking reference to relay to it. But this is sort of a combination of, and just a, I guess, 1%, not even that, of what they've shared with me on Earth and its history and who we are. <laughs> Matt? That was an awesome answer, Pete. Thank you so much for that. You really, really explained your perspective and what it was you were able to share quite eloquently. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm well for me. That's you're like preaching to the choir here. It's, it's, it's he, a, he used the term geometric. What was it, Pete? Geometric. Geometric light realm. You know, when he says that, you know what I'm thinking of, Matt. I know you haven't seen it. It's the ending of Interstellar. Okay, no, I haven't seen it. Where Matthew McConaughey goes out beyond the edge of space and mm -hmm. then everything just time-space then folds into nothing more than geometric mathematical patterns. Okay, yep. And this is what Pete's telling us. Hmm. Again, it's one of those situations where Hollywood imitates life. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. I haven't seen that. I must, I must see that. No, I haven't seen it either. But Clint talks about it all the time. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to get the daggone thing. I probably have it. I just haven't looked at it yet. Yep. Um... Tell us about the most successful CE5 experience you've had lately, Peter. Oh, God. No, it, it, it's all the time. Like, anybody can go and see 
the only time it hasn't really been that successful on the scene craft level is when it's been raining, but people have seen it in our home when, when we go inside because we have the public come to the home to see it. Or sometimes we'll go down to Seaford Beach. Um, or we'll do, you know, other places. We've done it around Australia and we went to James Gillilands Ranch, the East City Ranch in America, and had a heap of stuff going there as well. And he stayed with us for three months. But, but um, it's sort of hard to say the most successful event. Um, it's just great. You know, we've always got something at every event that, that happens. It's just great seeing people, um, you know, be open to it. And then you've got the satellite trackers and they can see what the planes are and everything. When they see something phasing or completely blink out, and we've got a lot of this stuff on infrared footage where the stuff completely blinks out. Um, you know, all different types of crafts and manifestations happen, but it's sort of hard to pinpoint one because it's, it's just an all, you know, all the time thing for us. Pete, you're a smart guy. Tell us what you think Harp's doing and CERN. CERN. What's your opinion on that? I don't know. I've heard a lot of crap about it about both. Now, what I'll say is that with Harp, look, we've got facts from what even, you know, there's certain even Harp documentaries where people that have been part of it um, have come forward and said what they've done with it, what they can use it for military applications and all this and that. And we Stern, they've just, I think, recently said that it may not be the God particle what they saw or something like that. I can't remember. But what's happening is that, like anything good, right, I think there's a smoke screen to it. And what I mean by smoke screen is, like anything good in the public domain that we think, oh, brand new and fantastic, Usually there's something behind the scenes that just makes that look like kids play. If so you get my drift. The public mm. face and then the, yeah. the real ulterior motive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I think there may be Stargate type applications that they don't even know with Harp or not Harp with um with CERN. But I think it's like the first stage of it and I don't even think they even realise it a lot of them that because they're, they're messing with something that they don't know what it's capable of. But it's, I don't think it's like a lot of this stuff that people are talking about where, um, you know, that's why half of the holes in the earth around the world are coming from CERN. And um, it, I don't know, I, I, we could go on for hours about the crap that's been spouted about, you know, all this stuff, which, you know, is conspiracy theory. Somebody's sitting there probably smoking weed all day, making up this crap to see how many people will laugh at it or believe it. But, um, yeah, it's... Harp, you know, one thing that was funny was I actually heard John Lear a couple of years ago talk about that the people, two of the people I think that own Harp or, or a part of Harp, they've got the mining and mineral rights to mining um, throughout the solar system. And apparently the UN made something up, or I think it was the UN, where you can't mine, no country can mine anywhere in the solar system, but they never said anything about individual people. And I think it was Guy and Kramer and someone else, um, the, the guy in Kramer, those two people I think were connected to Harp, which I found interesting. But um, again, you know, we look at Harp technology, that's sort of nothing new. I do think there is something into artificial intelligence because I've experienced it and seen it and got information on it personally from my experiences. And I think what's happening is that's being created by what used to be the Elohim, and we could now call the Archons, and there's different variations creating an energetic grid throughout the solar system that goes through certain portals to other realms and other parts throughout the galaxy where a lot of why we're in the predicament we are is because um, there's been a manipulation of some type going on. And I think this type of technology far passes anything um, that many could make up or think about. But what I'm saying is this may be connected to HARP in some way of HARP trapping a frequency here and through chemtrails and a lot of other things um, there's almost like a vibrational um, fuzziness, almost like a dull in vibration to keep us where we're at. And I'll tell you one thing, and I, I've talked to some people about this lately, is that at certain times when I walk outside, I can see, um, if you look at the back of a CD, like a, a music CD, you know that rainbow iridescent colour? Yep. Yes, I can, I can look into the sky at certain times, not, a, not on demand, but I can see the flower of life as a dome over the entire sky. Buildings and trees will block it out. And that is one of the conscious grids. And um, I believe that part of that's being used and manipulated through the AI to keep this vibrational frequency here. And I don't believe the flower of life is a bad thing, but I believe that part of it's being manipulated at this time 
to keep that frequency here, and I can see that with my own eyes. Beyond, 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 three, 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 D, 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 D. Look, you get no complaints out of me with that one either. I can see certain things as well. We were taught in our meditations, we were taught how to defocus so you can actually see the prana and the air vitality and all the things that are going yeah, on out there. Yep. And so I thoroughly agree with that as well. Um, I was watching um, one of your YouTube videos and you mentioned Dimension 5. And you were saying that they don't need what we humans need there. So what I wanted to ask you was what do the beings that... what be, What do the beings from Dimension 5 need? In other words, how do they live? What is, what is their purpose insofar, besides just the evolutionary thing? From, from what you've experienced. Yeah. Um, the best way to sort of put this, and I hate even again using even terms of dimension, like, you know, five, fifth dimension, six or whatever, but I will sometimes get, use it as a reference or a point for people for understanding, you know, a few vibrations up, and even mm-hmm. they'll relate it to me sometimes like that. But things are borderline, it's almost like the crossing point for me of almost losing this realm and going to the geometric light realms. Things are more ethereal, but what happens is when you pop into, and we say ethereal, the stuff that you can even think of on Disneyland and things like that, I mean cartoons and fairies and all that sort of stuff, like they offset, like a lot of Crystal City will reside in those areas and the realms are, everything to me is just energy when you get to, to those realms. Um, though some will have human type form, a lot of them actually have human type form and it's because we're a mixture of them, that's why whether it's mantis or you're going into a number of other things, but um, it, it depends on, again, the vibration, because when you hit 5D, there's there's a variation of vibrations within 5D. So we're in 3D now, but it's not just 3D, there's different vibrations within 3D. Um, but most commonly, things will look very HD in colour. And when you come back to this realm, it looks like a 70, 70s coloured television with static on it. Mm. Um, but when you go to those realms, it's very um, heightened in colour, and even colours exist there that don't here. So what, um, you, what you're saying, Pete, is technically in this realm of 3D, it's very dull, and in, exactly. a, high, in a higher realm, it's like the contrast brightness and everything's been turned up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and depending on the the level of consciousness, or not level of consciousness, but I guess, oh yes, and the vibration that they're resonating with in that five, five dimension will depend on what the civilization's like, what they're communicating with also. Um, like in, in Orion, there's a part of me that was there and I didn't realise just two years later, it's an old, older man. And I've got memory of what's going on. I can connect with it and see things and, and do things on occasion. And everything is there almost like a rainforest and the sky is purple. And there are still, you know, so, so very... Um, much like Queensland, the weather there, and there's tulip type, not tulips, but very similar to them, and they're like the size of basketball. And when I was shown the true nature of what he actually is, he was one of the rainbow life beings. Mm. So, but what I'm saying is he will reside in those that vibration in terms of there's a rainforest and things there, but then he can phase out and go straight to the geometric light realms, but he seems to just hang out at that... Um, at this place in Orion, which I believe is behind Alnitar, um, one of the middle stars, the middle right star on Orion's belt. But I don't think we could see it here because I think it's phased out. Um, I think it's dimensional. Just like I believe there's a lot of other planetary bodies that we've got in our solar system that you can't see until you go up a certain few vibrations, if that makes yep, sense. Absolutely. Am I answering this all right? Because I keep on going all over the show. No, 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 no. It's very good. That's basically what it is. It's interesting. I was just writing down a few notes as, as far as Orion is concerned. Our list is a pretty, ch- pretty cluey and pretty When it comes to things in. along those yeah. lines, I think so. Excellent. It's, um, it's a lot to, uh, to have in your head, as you guys know as well. It's this... Um, it, it overtakes you and people can become very obsessed with it, but the amount of knowledge and things that you can learn and you just keep learning about things is amazing. Well, that, that, that's true, Pete, because um, quite often Matt and I will discuss things in studio while we're on air on a Saturday night, and we won't stop 
to give we won't always stop to give a huge backstory about something we'll, sometimes we'll just name drop and we'll just expect our listeners and we'll tell them hey guys check this out go and do a little bit of reading and a bit of research on your own and that's and that snowballs from there doesn't it oh yeah that's the way it works and the other thing i know that i think is very important is as you said you used to meditate a lot and I think in this day, in the day we're in now, which is everybody wants everything instant, you're not going to get a lot of people out there that are going to want to meditate six or 12 hours in a day. And what it does is it's, you're basically tuning yourself up. You're basically tuning up your spiritual body and the energy of it. So a lot of times the way we used to put it was qualitatively we are all connected to God, but quantitatively the people that do the work are a little bit more connected because of the work they do, the meditations that they do and things like that. So because of the meditations you're doing, this is the reason you can see and have experiences that you're having. And then by sharing those experiences with others, you're allowing them the opportunity to follow along in your footsteps and start doing the meditations themselves. It, de it definitely comes back to the point we want our listeners to be able to hear your experiences. But then we want them to go to Facebook, we want them to go out there, we want them to do research on these things. Well, I want them to look up and just say, whoa, you know, Al Ninam, what is it, Al Ninam, Al Nitak, and Mintaka are the three stars in Orion's Mintaka, belt. Yeah, yeah. And you better know that, and you then all of a sudden, okay, expand on that. What's going on in that, in that constellation? What's going on with Beetlejuice the Red Giant? What's going on in other realms and things like that? Because this is what is going to keep them aware and awake and open to all the different things that are out there. So it's it's a, it's a great thing as far as as far as we're concerned here. It's fun. And you Definitely. Just, you I love learning that stuff. Awesome job. No, you love learning this kind of stuff. It's fantastic. So listening to somebody like you is fantastic for us because our listeners get to hear you. And that's what we're about. We're almost out of time tonight, Matt. Yeah, I know. Do you got any last questions for Pete? Anything in particular oh, look, tonight I you could, want to ask I him? could continue on. I mean, you talk <laughs> Mount Rainier. I, gotta go in, I could go into tangents on that. You oh, no. talked oh, about... Yeah. You yeah. said UFO hunters. Wasn't Kenneth that... Arnold and all that, yeah. Oh, man. What about... You said UFO hunters. That's what? Bill Burns and those guys? Bill Burns, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pat, uh, I forget, I think, is how you pronounce his name. And I've had a couple of other different sort of scientist type blokes on there. Yeah. And, um, Last yeah. time we went over there, we stayed with Stan Romanek as well, and, oh, uh, yeah. and James as well, so uh, we just met Laura Eisenhower when we were last there as well, um, Paddy Greer, and Jim Maher, he was... Oh, he's something else. <laughs> oh, I just, I've always loved listening to him, and then when I met him in person, he was just so genuine, it was mm. just, um, epic to sit down and have a good chat to him, and I just read his most recent book called uh, Population Control, which is, um, yes. Yes. God, it's a pretty epic book. I'll tell you what, that guy has more information than a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. Amazing. Hey, Pete, would you like to give our listeners your web address tonight? Yeah, they can just go to uh, Um or if they just type in Peter UFO Australia or Melbourne, I'm sure my name will come up straight away. We've also got e30australia.org, which is E-C-E-T-I Australia.org. Um, everything sort of links back there in terms of the sky watches and things like that because we do have events mm -hmm. um, and, and things we, we uh, hold in the Melbourne area and um, even other parts of the country. But uh, those two, two websites, but uh, yeah, just Peter UFO Australia or something like that. I'm sure I'll be, be uh, the first thing that pops up. That is awesome. Thank Absolutely. You. Hey, Pete, just before you go, um, I'm looking at Matt when I say this. Matthew, at the start of the year, do you remember we both sat down and we wrote a wish list of people we wanted to speak to? Oh, yeah. I found that wish list yesterday, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we haven't spoken to anybody on that wish list as of yet, as of yet, mm -hmm. but we have knocked one of them off tonight. Excellent. Excellent. Peter Maxwell Slattery, thank you for your time tonight on Beyond 3D. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Cheers. I'll tell you what. Hey, 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 oh. hey, uh, um, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I'm I'm tired now. <laughs> I need to go home and have a scotch. No, I, I won't. That's not what I'm going to say. Actually, I'm going to say, well, um, it is what you got to say. No, it is not what I'm going <laughs> to say. The fact of the Matt Clint, as far as I'm concerned, I, I just absolutely loved that. But what I've just found out is that there's another person in Australia that we're going to have to connect with again because there's just too much information that has to be conveyed. And everybody's different. I mean, I get accused of talking too slow sometimes, and that's only because I have to slow down my thought process because mm -hmm. I'll belt words out at a million miles an hour mm -hmm. if I can. Pete was 
full of so much knowledge and so many experiences there that he just wanted to share as much as he could with what limited time we had tonight. Yeah. So we've got to thank him very, very highly again for that, Pete. Thank you so much for your yeah, time. Indeed, and we will definitely put all of Pete's information up on Facebook. And we will make sure that all you guys get to hear him again because we are going to put him in the list as far as family is concerned. And we're going to make sure that he... He's on the list. Yeah, exactly. We're going to make sure that everything goes quite well and you get the information that you guys need out there. This was fantastic as far as I'm concerned tonight, so thanks, Pete, again. And it is time for us to head down the proverbial road, Clint. Little man, you look tired. I am... It's been busy, and so... <laughs> We're going to head down the road and leave it for there. We're going to, we're going to park it there for now, but uh, thanks, guys, for listening, and we will return next week with another episode of Beyond 3D. So, Clint, you take good care of yourself. Clint, you take good care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You take good care of yourself. You take good care of yourself. I'll try to do that as well. So take care, guys. Be good, Matt. <laughs> Later. Just because you haven't experienced it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. <laughs>